I don't know. You got the schedule? So let's, uh, let's talk about what's coming up today, and then, Phil, you and I will talk a little bit more about your business, okay? okay. All right, so, so big day today. Uh, Phil and I are going to talk a little bit about uh, the Compellence business, and then we have a cloud panel that John Furrier is going to be running with a number of uh, uh, folks from Silicon Valley. And then we have the founder of SpringSource, uh, Rod Johnson. You know, they've done some really interesting things, VMware, building out their, their stack, you know, kind of like Microsoft did a couple decades ago, so we're going to talk to Rod about that. Then we have David Flynn from Fusion IO, you know, real interesting startup. We were talking about Flash before. We talked about big data. We've got Bill Cook from Green Plum coming on. And then the CIO of uh, Foster Pepper, Brian Bosserman. And then we got a cloud service uh, provider segment with Kent Langley, and then uh, that leads into uh, your buddy Rich Napolitano from, uh, from EMC, you know Rich. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> fierce competitors. So it's but, downhill throughout yeah. the day, right? <laughs> and then uh, we, Midday, we got Tim, Tim Garzi, the CIO of uh, California Resource Agency. So that's going to take us through uh, the morning. Phil, I want to talk about uh, Compellent. You really have done a, an amazing job. You're an entrepreneur, started a number of companies, um, and, and of all places, you know, the middle part of the country. You, know, you don't think about the you know, Minneapolis area being storage central, but it actually historically has been, you know, with CDC and Imprimis and so there's a lot of talent out there, isn't there? Yeah, it, uh, I actually think it's a competitive advantage. There's a uh, big competitive advantage being out in Minneapolis. Uh, a couple things are, you had, in the old mainframe days, you had IBM and the bunch. All but one of the bunch was headquartered in Minneapolis. So there was a lot of innovation that happened there. Um, now one that was real big was CDC, Control Data. And uh, in their, their roots, they would actually fund uh, entrepreneurial companies within the company. And so I'm not sure the venture community got as well established in Minneapolis, but the engineering community sure did. And uh, we've been able to take advantage of that. The, the quality of talent we have, uh, they're more loyal, they're affordable. Uh, you know, the engineers we've started with are all still there at Compellent. Uh, they don't hop around like they might out here in the valley. Um, and it's the quality that they come up with this enterprise class architectures is just you know, really, really differentiated for them. So. You got a lot of other storage companies out there. You, know, you got Seagate's uh, high-end enterprise drive division. All that's done out there. The old Veritas operations, uh, CNT, the old uh, you know channel extension Networking company, game. network systems. So there's just a lot of uh, ecosystem for storage for storage talent. Yeah, you know it's interesting you say that because I'm from New England and you remember the days of of Deck and Wang and Prime and DG. Mm -hmm. And then we had some tough times back there. But now entrepreneurs like yourself have brought in those teams, and they're really sharp people, they're loyal, uh, and they've just created a lot of value for customers, for, for investors. So, so maybe take us back to the, to the early days of, of Compellent. Um, I know Larry Asman a little bit, mm -hmm. great respect for him and his team. Mm -hmm. um, talk about the vision that you guys had when you, when you launched the company, because you've really seen it through, and I want the listeners to understand yeah. you know, where you've come from. Well, it's, um, uh, there's, there's three of us that founded the company. So myself, Larry Asman, as you mentioned, and John Guider, who's our chief operating officer right. and also a very visionary guy in the, in the storage space here. And if you kind of look at our backgrounds, there's a lot of storage DNA there. I go back to the IBM. I was a storage specialist. Uh, they found other companies. I think I counted they've done 11 storage subsystems in their career. And all of them have been successful. They uh, kind of the, did the first uh, blade server back in the late 80s, early 90s. So there's just a lot of innovation that's come out of uh, John and Larry's brain. And you know, I get to uh, take the ride with them here. But um, here's what we kind of saw in 2002. A lot of things were happening in the world that kind of influenced us. We had retired for a little bit and uh, started meeting in my basement again. And uh, in Minneapolis, it's too cold to uh, start a company in the garage. So you have to go to the basement. Yeah. In Minneapolis, you get uh, frozen to death otherwise. But so we're down in the basement and 9-11 had happened. Uh, I don't know if you remember the Northeast power outage, the, yeah, the brownouts, sure. that kind of stuff was happening. Uh, for some reason, it seemed like there was a lot of weather events that were happening then too. Um, Enron was starting to happen. You had to, this data retention was getting bigger. And what we saw was this kind of an opportunity that um, you know, a lot of high-end functionality was not available to masses of companies. It was too expensive, hard to implement, uh, in, in some ways maybe unaffordable. So what we said is, let's try to design a system that had twice the functionality of any system on the market, high-end or low-end or whatever but do it in a manner that it's 10 times easier to use and then make it so it's affordable for the first time uh, centralized storage buyer and stuff. 
And I think we hit, hit the, uh, the ball out of the park, frankly, on there. And I think that some of the core things we focused on were efficiency. We just saw with things like how storage is provisioned, it's just all wasted. You know, 70% was wasted is uh, what we found. Uh, the, uh, the other thing is that 80% of their data or 90% of the data is inactive, which they don't look at it every uh, in 30 days or more. So you got to take advantage of those phenomena and, and uh, get the efficiencies out for them. And I think we did it. One other thing we did that was kind of unique that uh, I think stands out that um, – when we started the company, we got a lot of press in Minneapolis because there wasn't a lot going on in the venture community then, 2002. And uh, we got covers of magazines in the front page of the business section. And we got a lot of interest from people, frankly, calling us saying, hey, can we come see what you're doing? We'd like to look at it. We want to be part of it. And, uh, you know, our first reaction at that time was to give them what I call the Heisman Trophy, kind of stiff arm them and tell them we're in secret mode or stealth mode. And, and then we kind of go, this is stupid. We're going to want to talk to these guys a couple months from now. We better bring them in the fold now. And... Uh, we start what we call the C3, the Compellent Customer Council. And that's been fantastic, still goes today. Uh, I thought we'd have eight or 10 people on that C3. We had 35 in the, in the original. So this is before we had product. We'd meet with them every six months or every uh, six weeks, tell them what we're doing, get their feedback. And they told us where their inefficiencies were and their pain was. And, and uh, I think we're able to be much more on target with what we came out with on a product because of listening to those customers. Yeah, I mean, uh, the whole focus on simplicity. I remember I left the storage business for a while. I was doing some software startups and then came back. and you guys had given me a briefing and I, and I was asking questions about your automated tiering and you may, wait a minute, you can, you can actually automate the placement of it? And, and I, Cause I didn't believe it. I said, yep. this is like a mainframe, you know, and, and, and then said, wow, if you can really do this, yeah. this is going to be a hot company. And sure enough. Yeah. yeah think about it. putting a, a volume or a file where part of it is RAID 10, part of it's RAID 6 or RAID 5, uh, part of it's on solid state, part of it's on fiber, part of it's on SATA and it's dynamically moving based on Availability, performance, and uh, usage characteristics and, that the user are doing. And the virtualization trend is just, it just fits perfectly. Just Yesterday, huge. I, we don't have a ton of time, but I wanted to talk a little bit about your business. I mean, you're growing very well. Mm -hmm. um, why is it that you're growing faster than, than the industry, substantially faster than the industry, and, and can it continue? Yeah, so we grew uh, last year, we grew 38% year over year. I think our segment sh uh, shrunk about 5%. So that was a big market share winner for us there. Uh, we get the, the, we're doing two things. One is our growth, the revenue growth has come from two places. One is the, uh, the growth of new customers we're adding. Like last quarter, for instance, we had 182 new customers in one quarter. That's substantial growth right there. And at the same time, if you look at our product revenue, you know, approximately 50 to 50% 50 or so comes from existing customers. So that says people like Heineken, once they get the product in there, like it, and will migrate more and more of their data from other systems onto us because it's so much easier to use, so much more efficient. So I think the growth that really comes from if we can keep those existing customers happy and get the word out on you know, our, our innovative solution. So I'm, we're real bullish on the future there. Great, and uh, I got to ask you, I mean, you must have seen a lot of interest since the uh, whole three-par Dell HP thing. I mean, is your website traffic gone to the roof? And Oh, there's, 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 there's a, it's, it's kind of fun to watch here. Your stock here. has uh, gone through the roof. <laughs> so thank you, 3PAR and Dell. It, it's, uh, it's fun to watch. I, you and I go back a long ways in storage. You know, I remember the days when it was Snorage, yeah. right? It was, it was a disk drive or a tape drive, and that's about all there now was to sexy. talk about. <laughs> and it's finally, good, it's finally getting its due and uh, getting some excitement, getting some interest, and uh, it, it, it's real good. I think it really just shows, I mean, just look at the show flow here, what people are doing with the cloud and that kind of stuff here. Stor the storage architecture is very, very important now. It's not a... You know, just buy a few disk drives and make it happen. It's, you've got to have an architecture that really is going to be the, have the flexibility and efficiencies they're going to need for this cloud environment. So yeah, and we're you, excited. And making it simple is hard, isn't it's it? It's hard. Yeah. It's real hard. Right. If you look at the sophistication of what we do, and then you have to do, we had a survey of our customers, like 91% said they spend less than three hours a week managing their SAN, where before that was three people a week. Yeah. So <laughs> you better make it simple and uh, make it so it can uh, do what they want to do, but do it in a way that's really, really integrated and automated. Excellent. Well, Phil Soren, CEO of Compel, I really appreciate you coming by theCUBE. Great story. Congratulations on everything. We look forward to watching your progress. Thank you. This is fun. Right, take care.